What gets you inspired? Sometimes for me, it is the people that I follow on Instagram, or maybe some of the people I watch on YouTube, or even the video games I play. And for a lot of the part, it's the music that I like to listen to. Most of the time when I like to edit my photos, I have to create like a mood. I don't even really like editing my photos during the day. I'm very much a night owl. And I like setting up lights around wherever I'm editing to get me into the mood to do it. I find that that really helps zone me in. So this is a photo that I went out and shot recently in the snow here in New York. And I wanted to show you how we can edit it. So for today's video, we're gonna edit a photo in a new software called Luminar Neo by a company called Skylum. And this particular software uses AI technology to help edit your photos. And I really love this photo because we've got this guy walking here in you know, sort of the right third of the image. And I actually like what's advertised here on one of those Times Square billboards. It's like this sort of stair set of exclamation marks. And obviously just the snow itself creates such a different atmosphere compared to any other setting I've ever shot in before. Cause the snow really fills up any negative space. So it makes this like a really meaty image. So there's one thing that I really like using in this app, which is called Glow. And it sort of just declaritizes everything around the image and you get that sort of dreamy effect. And you can actually change the type of glow that you want on your image. So for me, for this edit in particular, I really liked how the autumn effect here, it, it's sort of like a very subtle glow. So I think that really complements this image and we'll just keep the amount maybe around 40%. And editing like you'll see in a lot of different editing tutorials, and I would say on behalf of most artists and photographers, part of like the creative style of editing is just moving around sliders. There's a lot of different sliders here that can make a lot of different changes obviously to your edit. So it's just a matter of just going into each one of them and slowly adding onto your photo to see what's gonna work. We're gonna go straight into toning. And we're gonna come and click on the shadows because that's the most, that's the main part of the image that we're gonna affect first. Saturation, let's try around 50%. I think I'm gonna sit at around 208 and we're gonna boost that saturation a bit more. I think I wanna go for a bit more of an aqua, slightly more green aqua finish. So we might go like 202. And then come into the highlights and do about the same, but with less saturation. All right, next up, we're gonna come into the vignette. And this is kind of cool. Not that I would really use this for you know, a landscape image, but potentially for a portrait image or something else you wanna shift subject focus onto. And actually just go and click around on the screen and you can choose where you want your vignette to affect a bit more, or basically where you want the radius to come out from. But for us, we're just gonna keep it in the middle. We have lost a bit of detail. So I'm just gonna come into details and I guess bring them back in a little bit. We don't want to go overkill with it because we don't want it to actually look like noise or grain, or at least I don't want it to look like that. So I'm only going to make really minimal adjustments to it. And then large details for the big chunks, and then just sharpen the whole thing. So since I've been playing around with this application a bit, I've actually come into landscape. And even though this isn't a golden hour picture, it actually does make quite a bit of difference to different parts of the image. Like it saturates different parts, I'm trying to emulate golden hour, but I still think adding a little bit in like 20%, actually still makes a bit of a difference. It's like a very slight difference, but like I said, every single little thing that you change helps build onto your edit. Don't be afraid if you're in an editing software, especially this one, even if it's like recommended that you use a certain setting for something, like for example, using golden hour on a night image, don't be afraid to like still use it. Break the rules, don't follow society. And you can actually come into here this is why I think this application is really cool for creative photography, because right here, you could just relight your entire scene. And you can also come into here, you could sky replace something, which I will show you later at the end of this video of something else I did. And you can completely change your atmosphere. Like I could add mode, I could go into mode and add like fog, mist, haze, which I'm sure in the full version, this is currently still a trial version, or I'm sure in the full version, you can add in your own different atmospheres. But for example, we could add in fog like into this image, which basically just looks like a dehaze. Obviously it's not gonna work for this image because it's a snow one, but I'm just saying there's a lot of different things you can do. You can add a fucking sunray in. You want a sunray? Bang, chuck it in. <laughs> and then we can just move it around like, woo, yeah, coming out of the umbrella. Boom. <laughs> to finish this off, we're just gonna like give this image a bit more oomph because I think it just is lacking a bit of depth. So we're gonna come into develop, I'm gonna come into curves, and I like to place some dots on my tone curve here. 
and we're mainly gonna be working with the shadows, which is the bottom section here. I'm gonna bring this section across and then maybe bring this part down. And for my mid-tones and highlights, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit to create like a little, what we call an S curve, which is sort of a curve up towards the mid-tones and then it comes down towards the shadows, which if they do become too contrasty once you do this, you could just take some out, but I think it looks fine the way it is. That usually helps give your image a bit more of like a tone punch, if that makes sense. That's what I'm gonna call that term. So let's have a look at the before and after. And that is done using absolutely no HSL color sliders. In a lot of my work, honestly, in different editing softwares, I would use a lot of selective adjustments, split toning like we saw in today's video, and the tone curve. There's not a lot of times where I'm constantly playing around with the HSL colors and stuff, because once you start getting into that and you start changing lumosity and saturations and too much hue and differences, you can sort of create this really shitty cocktail of colors. That's why I think it's better to color grade the entire image or selectively grade the image rather than blindly mix and match colors around and hope that you get something. One more time, that's the before and that's after. If you wanna give Luminar Neo a go, I'm gonna link everything down in the description there. That'll take you to all the information you need to get you started with this software. I think it's really cool. And I obviously the full version's about to come out, I think in February, they told me. But I think if you're a creative photographer, I think this is a really cool application for you or even just a hobby photographer. I only just started playing around with this a little bit. So I went out and shot like some really boring photos here during the middle of the day and it was pretty overcast. And I just wanted to see how much I could change an image like this and just turn it into something like ridiculous. And so I brought it into this software and completely changed the sky. I started like relighting the scene and everything. Obviously this still needs a little bit of work and touching up because there's parts of the sky here that are obviously sky swapped. But although, yeah, okay, it sort of cheats the basis of photography. First of all, I don't think you should worry about what people think about your edits. And I also don't think that you should think that other people cared in the first place. You should just edit however you want to. And if you like doing sky swaps and you like being creative with your photography and your editing style and want to just make things different for fun, then do it. Like, don't worry about if someone's going to comment, oh, that's not realistic. That's not like, that's not how it's supposed to look. Like you Photoshop that. Don't worry about all that shit. Like just do it because you enjoy it. Obviously like this isn't the best example because this still needs a lot of like editing done. But I think I've been having a lot of fun on this program and I think you would enjoy it as well. I'm gonna be posting these pictures and plenty more pictures just like this one or the snow ones you just saw on my Instagram. So you can go check me out at North Borders. If you did like this video, maybe you can leave a like down below or help me out by hitting subscribe. But with that all said and done, have a shit one and I will see you in the next one.